Hey everyone, Jordan Poster, hope you're doing well. Um, I recently made a remix for Above and Beyond and Richard Bedford of their song Bittersweet and Blue, and I wanted to do a, a little breakdown of how I made that remix and uh, the work that went into it and the thoughts behind everything. And uh, yeah, give you a little, little peek into how I work. So let's dive straight into it. Okay, so as the first sort of subgroup of um, of sounds to go over for this remix, let's uh, let's take a look at the drums. Um, just the entire drum group together on its own sounds. Uh, let's play it here from the first drop. It sounds a little something like this. And um, the only the, the the biggest difference I think in in that specifically is the uh, the clap coming in for the second drop, together with the tambourine in the background. But other than that, it's a um, the drums are pretty consistent throughout the entire track. The the real thing that I think keeps it interesting is all these these different bits of automation that are going on. So this little hi-hat loop right here not only has uh, volume automation going on, but also um, a filter automation. So throughout the track, that sort of drive that it adds gets uh, taken out or slowly comes back in, and it just makes the arrangement feel a little bit more alive. So for example, on the second drop, on the start of that, it sounds like this and then slowly filters in to the point where the filter is completely open again. And all of those those high frequencies come through. And there's a couple of sounds in this track that do that exact same thing. There's a little white noise loop here that as you can see has volume automation, although it, you know quite simple throughout the entire track and just takes it back in and back out. Uh, same for the uh, tambourine, it just volume automates a lot faster than everything else, um, but it just makes everything feel a little little more alive that way. And um, then in the melodic part of the track, there's a couple of things that I think quite nicely accentuate the drum group. Um, this specific loop, for example, uh, has a quite interesting um, effect chain on it right here that really makes this sound. So this is what it sounds like on its own with the effect chain on. Just adds a really nice sort of um, tonal texture to, to this entire drum group. So if you then take a look at the, um, the mixer channel for the sound and turn everything off for it, a second. Um, this is what it sounds like dry. It still has that tonality to it, but you also have these um, these sort of clicks as like a, a remainder of you know little bits being reversed and all that. And these effects just get rid of that. And specifically, this this filter here automating um, really adds some, you know, some flow to it. It goes back in, fades back out, and just turns it into more of an atmospheric kind of piece. Um, and yeah, that's that's mostly the filter. And then the delay and reverb. Reverb, my one of my go-tos, and probably the ones that I use the most out of all of them is Valhalla Room. It has a really, really nice ring to it. Um, you know, it's quite a cheap plugin, so I can only recommend anyone who doesn't have it to grab it. It's it's absolutely amazing. You use it all the time. Um, yeah, and the delay and the reverb um, and the help add a lot of texture to it. And then another loop that I think adds quite nicely to the uh, to the drum group is this little sine wave loop that um, had to run around for CPU purposes, but is um, is incredibly simple in sound design. 
It's literally just a little sine wave with some noise sprinkled on top, a little EQ, and this cool little um, mid-side plugin, um, which just boosts the mids a little more. It just felt a little too, uh, too wide and just wanted to make sure it cut through nicely in the track through the middle. Um, so that playing on its own sounds a little something like this. And then in the context of that with, uh, with all the drums. You know, it really, it really starts to come together. And a couple of extra little things uh, that, uh, that add to that is this uh, stack right here of melodics and there's another pad up here. This is what you get, by the way, if you don't clean up your project files properly. Um, it's something that I, uh, that I need to do a better job at. It could still be way, way worse. And um, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I've spent enough time working on this project that I know exactly where these things are, um, but yeah, be, uh, be clean with your project files and do yourself a favor. So here, the extra synths going on in the track, you have these little, um, it's like a choir basically. Combined with this little synth. Both of these renders from um, a project that I originally started in uh, in Reason, which is why I had to render these two out, and um, this little saw pad over here. A little piano rendered from Radical Keys from Reason Studios. Shout out, by the way, to Reason Studios and um, my buddy Protostar for hooking me up with the uh, the rec extension is really, really cool. It allows me to use all of these cool uh, plugins and effects that Reason has right here in FL Studio. Um, it works really, really smoothly and I've had a ton of fun um, exploring all of that stuff. Um, yeah, so Radical Keys sounds something like this. Yeah, it just adds a little more uh, tonal variation throughout the track. And a little sort of arp fill right here. So all of that together it starts to sound like this. Really getting there now. So looking at the, the vocal real quick, um, there wasn't a ton that I really had to do to that. Um, there's this little plugin, which just adds a little um, delay doubler and reverb to it respectively. Um, and this is just to have the vocal fill up that stereo field a bit um, a bit more. A little EQ, just cause in, um, in this specific instrumental arrangement, Lower frequencies just didn't turn out to work too well, so I cut those out. And then a little bit of OTT on top just to uh, to glue it all together. More interesting, I think, is this specific chain over here, which is on top of these vocal bits that come in and out throughout the track. Um, so let's just go over the chain real quick. We have a uh, filter first, and then we have a web filter Pro R. Um, Pro R is really cool when you're specifically looking for really long tails and um, you just need to be precise with the EQ on that. That's what Pro R is really, really cool for. I try to use it not too much just because um, it, it forces me eventually to start rendering out stuff and I prefer not to do that if I don't have to. Um, but specifically here, it worked really well. Then here from Guitar Rig, we have a tape echo and we have a fruity pan o -matic, which is basically just a, um, a padding automation. As you can see here, the amount of speed knobs. Um, it just um, creates this cool kind of back and forth effect between the left and the right channel on the track. A little bit of EQ on top, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it for the chain. But when you put all of that together, um, and then specifically the filter automation um, with 
the filter on uh, as being the very first effect on that chain, um, it starts to create this really cool effect. And playing around with that, you get a bunch of different variations throughout the track, which I ended up really liking. And here in the intro as well, you you just get these very, uh, very specific outtakes of the vocal, which uh, uh, just, you know, tease the main vocal coming in a bit later. It's just a cool way to kind of um, play around with the vocal without, you know, having the main vocal uh, play, which keeps it special when when that eventually does come in. So I asked you guys as well to uh, submit questions on social media that you had specifically about this remix. And um, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, John Carr on Twitter, uh, Real Ivanovic and Ramiro Spanides on Instagram who specifically were interested to uh, to find out what the uh, what the lead synth in this track is. So let's dive into that next. All right, so here we are with the main lead. Um, the main lead for this remix consists of three different layers. And uh, the most important one is this one right here, which comes out of this uh, cool VSD called Diva and sounds like this. And then the second layer is um, basically the same sound, but on a lower octave and offsets the, uh, the, the main pattern. It just um, fills up the space right below that lead in the frequency spectrum um, a, little, a little better. And then the third layer is this um, instance of Serum, which uh, here, I'll just, I'll just play it for you. Uh, as you can tell, drowned in reverb, um, which is uh, for a very specific reason, because you already have these two layers going on, and they make up the the main sort of sound for the lead. And then this third layer is is basically just there to um, create extra width and um, just kind of fill everything up behind that that main lead. So without any of the effects, um, this this layer sounds something like this. Way too loud, um, too much going on in the mids, and way too dry. But then with all of those effects on and playing with the, uh, the other two layers, And I think an important part as well of this main lead is the uh, the filter automation on the uh, on the main layer. As you can see, it just sort of ramps up every four bars, which um, which adds a lot of extra um, progression through the track. You know, otherwise you have a lead that is pretty much consistent for the entire the entire time that it plays, and this just makes it feel a little more organic, which I think is important when you're dealing with synths and especially the ones that um, are really just like this one, uh, completely on grid, you know, uh, which uh, unless you're very trained at a musical instrument is, is hard to recreate just with your with your hands. So playing around with stuff like filler automation is a great idea to give a little, you know, a bit more of a human human touch. Okay, and then last but not least, we have the, uh, the bass lines in the track. And there's two main ones, very, very simple ones. Uh, you have the sub right here, which comes out of um, Reason's monotone bass synthesizer. Um, very simple in, in sound design. Uh, two oscillators, one being a saw, one being a sine wave and um, just a little more leaning towards the uh, saw wave, a low pass filter on top of that, and that sounds something like this.
very 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 simple um so to kind of give a little more character to that there's this uh this top layer right here uh seven sign because it is playing seven semitones above the uh, original bass line and that one sounds like this just as you can see just a couple of saw waves um simple filter on top of it and uh camel crusher uh it's a really cool distortion saturation plugin uh, with just a little bit of distortion on top just to bring out the uh, the overtones a little more. Uh, anyway, yeah, it sounds like this. And again, as you can tell uh, from listening to that, there is some filter automation going on. Uh, this one every two bars, which um, again, just gives a bit more of an organic touch to a uh, completely digital synth. So it's a, you know, it's a, a very straightforward bass line, but in the context of the track, it, it does exactly what it needs to do. It fills up the, uh, the low end of the track really nicely. So having gone through all of that, um, if you play everything at the same time, this is what it sounds like. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my remix for Above and Beyond and Richard Batford. Uh, I hope you found this insightful. And uh, yeah, I have a lot more music coming out. I actually have uh, two tracks coming out in the uh, in the next week, which I'm incredibly stoked about because obviously this is a remix, and those two are 100% um, original works so i'm really excited to to share those with you guys and uh and, and hear what you think after all of these months of just sitting on them and only being able to listen to them myself uh this was a ton of fun to do i will probably do more of these in the future especially if you guys uh really like them as well so yeah let me know what you uh what you enjoyed specifically about this and um yeah i hope to see you guys again very very soon cheers <laughs>